And now, again, this brings us back to the same thing. Uh, the insurance company is going to be like, well, we've never heard of this. It's new technology, so we're not going to pay for it. I don't know about you that. Know, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to hypothesize it, because it, I think it's so know. new that I haven't heard anyone being rejected <laughs> for Zika virus, and I don't want viewers feel that the insurance company is going to reject you if you want to get treatment for Zika. Uh, but it's not the case. I think the case is education, uh, prevention, and, and uh, there's no treatment for Zika. So once you have the virus, the only thing you can do is, um, you know, uh, take care of the symptoms. And the symptoms are fever and aches, and then you can take Tylenol and uh, Advil and uh, non-steroidal uh, to, to, uh, to basically help you with the symptoms and fluid, and after a while, your body fights it. The good news is so it's not, that it's something not, that- Not like Lyme, right? Yeah, it's completely very different. Okay. So, so the good thing, one, one thing that the viewers, they really have to understand is like, nobody dies from Zika, and nobody has died from Zika yet. However, that, the only, uh, the only bad thing about Zika is the pregnancy and, and uh, development of the, of the fetus. Right, which can affect could the affect be, Yeah, could affect the family and could affect the mom and everybody right. um, a lot. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, the, uh, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, is still working on this and send guidelines and then they send those off to the sure. hospitals, the doctors, right? You know, by far, our C, uh, you know, CDC is one of the, I would say they're doing the great job as far, in, as, far as finding out where it is and informing, and I think they've been fantastic. Um, now, there is no vaccine yet. There could be a vaccine later on, right? We, I mean, I'm sure somebody's working on it. Um, and there is no, there is only, pro, the only prevention is like, obviously, you don't want to be in an infected area. You want to make sure you don't get mosquito bites. You want to make sure if you're coming from overseas, from like Brazil or Caribbean or other places, and you're in a situation that you might have think you, you, had, you had Zika virus. Uh, check with your doctor, um, and if you obviously if you're pregnant, you have to be extremely extremely cautious. And um, if you think you know um, someone is in the high risk or might have Zika, you know uh, practice safe sex. So um, that way you're at least preventing yourself. Right, especially if you're a pregnant woman. Absolutely. You know that that's that's a really big thing. And then it goes back to also what we were saying about technology last time. And you were talking about DNA map testing, that you can actually tell if you're in one of these categories where your heart attack, lung, kidney, liver, all this, all these other things with this new technology that's coming out. How is that progressing? You think in the future for cardiology? So in cardiology, we're realizing more and more that a lot of um, a lot of cardiac diseases are are actually genetic. You know, somebody could have a high cholesterol and they don't progress to have a heart disease as fast as the other person. And, you know, if your father had, had a heart attack at early age, you're much higher risk to have a heart attack at early age. So there's definitely a genetic predisposition for heart attack, heart disease, atherosclerotic disease, stroke. Um, and more and more we're realizing what are those, those, uh, those genes and how we can look for it. So the way we, we can, if you find a gene that is causing and increasing your risk of a heart disease, we can use the same gene and through PCR and other technology, we can we can discover if you are having that gene or that mutation. And if you do, then we're gonna be much more aggressive. We can change your DNA because you're born with your DNA. Right. That's something that is permanent at this time, you know, a lifetime. But what we should do is if you're in a high risk and you have the gene, we should be more and aggressive with the risk right. uh, of a heart disease. We gotta make sure your blood pressure is very well, well controlled. We gotta make sure your cholesterol is well in check. We gotta make sure your diabetes, if you know your, your blood sugar, your hemoglobin A1C is well and controlled. We gotta make sure you don't smoke. So if you know what your genetic makeup is and if you have these genes, you get a chance to be more active and preventive and be change your lifestyle to the point that you, even if you have the risk, you're not gonna have the disease. And like you've said before, it's better to find out, especially with diseases of the heart and stuff like that, that, you know, uh, find out the doctor's office at three in the afternoon than in your bedroom at 3 a.m. True, I mean, I, and, and this, is, this is actually something very important. Uh, for the viewers to know is, you know, if you get, if you have a heart attack and you go to an emergency room, you don't know who you're going to get and you don't know what time or where 
which emergency room you're going to get into. So obviously not all the hospitals are the same. Not all the doctors are the same. So it's very important that use the time to research a doctor and know what you do. So you're going to be prevent, you're going to be actually proactive rather than reactive. Because if you go at middle of the night because you got a heart attack after shoveling snow, you don't know who you're going to get and you don't know, you know, how much experience that person have and that decreases the risk and outcome. And also in the medical news where we found out is heart attacks way up there for women now, okay, almost four times as much as men and women more likely to die of cardiovascular disease now than cancer. So I know. Yeah. it's really gone up and the classic Hollywood heart attack, as they call it, where man or woman would clutch their tes and, uh, chest and, and fall over, uh, that does not happen with women. With women, it can be jaw pain, it can be shoulder pain, uh, it can be all these other symptoms that men would never have. So uh, cardiology is now looking very deeply into that to research this and find out, you know, when is it time for these women to really start seeing a cardiologist or a doctor? So the risk of heart attack, actually the incidence of heart attack among women has tripled in past decade, just in the past 10 years, right? And the reason for, there are multiple different reasons. One is the fact that more and more women are working. They are working jobs, they take care of the family, and they're running many hats, and they're juggling multiple different responsibilities. As a result, they're stressed. Show me a woman. Do you know any woman who's not as stressed? Oh. They all seem to me as stressed, like men. <laughs> all right? So their rage is coming up. Everybody's stressed out. <laughs> and everyone is upset, right? So I think the stress of life and the fact that women is getting back to the workforce as much as men, I think that's bringing the incidence a lot higher. Secondly is the food and diets. I think the women that they work and they are busy, they don't eat well. They don't eat the nutritionist or they don't eat the quality food. And as a result, we're missing a lot of nutrition and a lot of vitamin in our body that usually we should be getting it, okay? And such as omega-3s, we know omega-3s are fantastic. We know CoQ10 enzymes are very good. We know, you know, redis rice and other stuff it could be having cardiac protective effect. And uh, so they are, in a way, even though we're getting, we're getting uh, more obese because of the quality of the food and we, all, we are we're getting overweight, but in reality, all these people that they overweight, they, in reality, they are malnutritioned because they don't get the good food. They get a lot of bad food, okay? Right. And the bad food causes diabetes and hypertension and other stuff. So the risks keep coming up and gradually coming up. The third thing, I think the quality of the food has been declining, you know? I mean, you go to, uh, you know, you go to the supermarket and you buy a tomato. It's a beautiful looking tomato. Uh, it's big, red, but it doesn't have a taste. Tastes like air. Right, which is these uh, with the GMO, genetically modified They're foods. all genetically yeah. modified food. Corn, corn syrups, you know, all the, the not people have gluten allergy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, could that be because they are genetically modified? Not people have gluten allergy all of a sudden? Because somehow our body doesn't recognize this, 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 this glutens that not genetically modified? That's a possibility. Right. We're using hormones in the food. We're using pesticides in the food, right? So... You combine all these small little factors together, and that's what you see more and more people having heart attack and cancer too. You know, cancer is becoming epidemic. It's very normal in my room, in a, in, a, in the office, that you know I hear, you know, oh, I just got diagnosed with breast cancer. I just diagnosed with colon cancer. I just diagnosed with lung cancer. It used to be a taboo. Someone has a cancer, it would it would be like a death sentence. It was, oh my God, he has a cancer, really. Now it's like, oh, it's like I have a flu or I had diarrhea yesterday. Meanwhile, they were diagnosed with a cancer and they get chemotherapy and radiation. So it's becoming very common and we're losing our uh, sensitivity towards these, these really horrific diseases. And I think it's all environmental. I think it's all what we eat. I think it's all because of the stress. And, and, and as a result, they basically causing your body to to react either by heart attack or by by by, by cancer or by stroke and um, and these are the changes we have right now in 2016 and and cancer basically is a mutation so if you're throwing mutated things into your body it's not going to help you yeah. know so we call uh, them carcinogens. carcinogens so the carcinogens right. are this this any chemical or any substance that actually works on a DNA and change that to mutate and as a result the new cells 
act differently than the old cells and, uh, and they don't have the Brex system and they multiply and multiply and multiply and disseminate and becomes cancer. Right. So it just takes a small little carcinogen. Now, what are those carcinogens could be, right? It could be in what you eat, what you breed, right? And what you drink. Right. So it could be in the water, it could be in the food, it could be what we inhale, you know, the pollution itself can cause that. But nevertheless, we see the incidence of cancers, even though with the technologies that we have, we detect cancer earlier and we treat it much better, but it's becoming much uh, prevalent. Well, Dr. Cavastino, I want to thank you for coming on the program again and answering some of our questions, letting sure. us know what's going on in the insurance industry also. And uh, if they have any questions, the audience, uh, you'll see a prompt at the end of the show where you can contact Dr. Cavastino at heartandhealth.com where uh, he'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So uh, once again, hopefully we can get you back on. My uh, pleasure. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm, uh, my job is to help patients. So if I can do it through your medium or in my office, it would be my pleasure, my pleasure and my honor to educate and, and treat. Well, thanks again for being on. Till next time, I'm Larry Micarenda. This has been an edition of Excelsior Forum and Profiles. We'll see you right back here on this channel. You take care. Bye.